You've got questions. We've got answers. We have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Great to be back with you as always, Bob. It's great to have you. And I understand your inbox is fairly full of questions. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions this week, Bob, and that's great. That means people are taking the time to learn about their finances, which is our mission here. And this question to us comes from Ed. And Ed effectively asks, hey, Bob, Jeff, I'm getting ready to retire uh, in a few years, or my wife is getting ready to retire. I've recently retired, and we're going to be going on Medicare soon. We're looking at doing some Roth conversions. If we time our Roth conversions to end in the same year that we retire, can we submit a form to the Social Security uh, Administration and explain to them that we've had a, a life-changing event to reduce our IRMA, right? Our income-related monthly adjustment amount. That's the Part B and Part D premiums that are paid. That's effectively the question here. And uh, this is an interesting question. And some of it's going to come down to actually who looks at this form. Uh, but in general, the answer to this is yes. If the Roth conversions and the, uh, and the salary go away in the same year, you apply, you say, I had a life-changing event. The event was I retired from work, my previous income was X, my new income will be Y, um, and the Social Security will generally base it upon that new income amount. The fact that there were some Roth conversions in there, that alone would not have qualified as a life-changing event, but the fact that it was coupled with a retirement, that retirement is a life-changing event. Right. So if they deny you um, the lowering of the IRMA, there is a way to appeal this, is there not? There are several opportunities for appeal. You, you get to appeal, then you kind of, you can get to a judge eventually. I mean, there's, there's a number of mechanisms here for appeal. I think it's also worth pointing out that the main step here, right, that we're talking about is a filing of a very simple piece of paper. So for those listening who aren't aware, right, at 65, you generally will go on to Medicare. Now, there are some exceptions if you're still working, et cetera, but in, in most cases, people go on Medicare at age 65. Medicare Part A is generally free for most people at that age. Part B and Part D, so Part B being like you go to the doctor and Part D, your drug plan, those premiums are tiered based on how much you earn or what your total income is. But it's not as simple as what's your income this year. And it's not even as simple as what was your income last year. In general, it's based on your income from two years prior, because that's the most recent information Social Security has on file. So for argument's sake, someone who turns 65 in 2024 actually needs to start worrying about what their income is for Medicare Part B and D premiums this year in 2022. And let's say you had a high income this year and you went down dramatically next year and the year afterwards. Well, Social Security doesn't necessarily know that. So they look back at 2022 and they say, well, you owe us a lot of money for your premiums. Your income in 2022 was high. So your 2024 Medicare Part premiums will be bumped up. There is a way, a mechanism. It's Social Security Form 44. Simple. Two fours, right? 44. You fill out that form. It's essentially as simple as filling out your personal information, checking a box for what qualifies as a life-changing event. And there's a few of them listed. I was married or divorced or someone passed away or I changed, like I lost a job. Those are all common life-changing events. You check the box and you put what your old income was and what you think your new income will be. And Social Security will base your Medicare Part B and D premiums on that new expected income as opposed to the old income. But you can only get that reduction for a life-changing event. Yeah. In your experience with your clients, do most people get the reduction or? You know, again, this is purely anecdotal, uh, but I've seen a lot more success over recent years um, than in the past. It seems more like if, if people have their act together, and especially if they send in a, a good explanation or they attach a, you know, a note that says, you know, congratulations, your last day of work is, you know, Tuesday, the 20th of, of X year. And you can kind of show that documentation or you send in a death certificate. If you, if you dot your I's and cross your T's, 
there's a pretty good chance that you're going to see an approval here. Yeah. All right. So a crazy question, knowing the problems that the IRS is having right now in terms of getting through returns, uh, mm -hmm. do you envision a day where Social Security will look back three years because they can't get the two year ago return? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, it may it may very well be. You know, thankfully, in terms of the delay, Social Security hasn't been, you know, they, they are delayed, but they haven't been nearly as delayed on processing some of their things as the IRS. So I've spoken with some, some individuals who have submitted this, you know, SSA Form 44 uh, fairly recently, and they've actually received responses from the Social Security Administration. Whereas, Bob, I can tell you, I'm still waiting for my own personal tax refund for 2021. So, uh, Hopefully, the IRS will catch back up here at some point. But yeah, if, if we don't have a return, they will probably have to go back to the most recent return on file, which could be three years. I mean, who knows? By the time we're done, it'll be what was how much did you make when you were 50? And we're going to base that on and say, so hopefully, that doesn't become the case. It's, it's already complicated enough going back two years. All right. Well, I think you answered Ed's question and a whole bunch more. So thanks ever. We thank Ed and we thank all of you in advance for sending your questions. This is what Bob and I love doing. We get to wake up and answer fun questions and talk about nerdy things like Social Security and Irma and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you've got a question, let us know. Send us an email to askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, you can send that email to askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your question real soon.